While straightforward SMS text messaging isn't perfect by any means, the adaptation of the RCS standard means that you can do pretty neat things with Google Messages that you couldn't for a very long time. With that in mind, we have a few tips and tricks for using RCS messaging and Google Messages features to its fullest. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So what is RCS messaging? Well, RCS stands for Rich Communication Services and is a standard used by Google in order to provide messaging services that can handle a lot more than your standard texts or SMS. For instance, with RCS and Google Messages, you don't have to worry about character count limit or sending downright awful quality photos to your contacts. Think of RCS messaging as smart texting. Of course, Apple already has its own solution with iMessage for iPhone, which incorporates a different protocol in order to enhance messaging between iPhone users. Unfortunately, it seems that for the time being, only Android users will be able to take advantage of RCS messaging between one another, that is. This means that if an iPhone user texts an Android user, the timed out SMS messaging protocol will be in use. We've talked about messaging or the messaging mess that Google has left in a dedicated video. So be sure to check that out down in the description below to learn just what's gone wrong. But since RCS's adoption by Google in 2016 for Android, more carriers have hopped on board to support the standard along with their SMS services. This means that the chances are high that you'll find another Android user using the RCS standard on their device. And while sole SMS texting uses a mobile carrier's network, RCS messaging is done over Wi-Fi or mobile data, which lends itself to being able to send larger files and receive information and media quicker than SMS can. Before you can take advantage of everything RCS messaging has to offer, you'll need to enable it in the settings of Google Messages and set Google Messages as your default messaging app of choice. Open the Google Messages app if you have this already on your Android device, then you can just tap the three dot menu at the top right of your screen if there is no prompt enabling this setting for you. Tap settings in the menu that appears, then tap on chat features. Just look for the setting that says enable chat features and toggle that on, and this will enable chat features for your device. So Google Messages and RCS also have the ability to have read receipts for messages that you send. And read receipts are likely very familiar to you out there. Apps like Telegram and WhatsApp utilize this tool to help people communicate a little bit better and kind of indicate when someone has read something you've sent them. In Google Messages, read receipts can be turned on as well as so that friends and family know when you've seen and read the messages. Of course, this is going to be completely up to you whether you like this feature, but if you don't like it or you don't like people knowing when you've read the messages, you can disable read receipts entirely. If you do want to change your settings though, all you need to do is open the Google Messages app on your Android phone, then tap the upper right three dot menu, which is obviously in the top right of your screen. Tap the settings in the menu that appears, then tap on chat features. All you have to do is scroll down to the send read receipts option and toggle this on or off, depending on your preference. If it's on, people will see when you've read your messages, when it's off, nobody will see anything just like good old SMS. One of Google Messages features that comes in handy a little bit more often and is a little bit better in our opinion than read receipts is typing indicators. And typing indicators appear in the form of three little dots on the left bottom side of any open chat window with a contact. This indicator lets you know that the other person is typing and about to send something your way, or you would hope they will. When you enable this feature, keep in mind that you're turning it on for others so that when you type, Others using Google Messages will know that you're getting back to them or you are currently typing a message to send to them. That said, here's how you can quickly switch this on. Just open the Google Messages app on your Android device, tap the three dot menu at the top right of your screen and tap settings, then tap on chat features again. Search for or scroll down to show typing indicators and toggle this on or off as you see fit. RCS messaging also allows for end-to-end -end encryption, a security process that ensures your messages are your business only, basically. And this is something that SMS, in its simplicity, simply can't allow for. End-to-end -end encryption is becoming a staple of messaging services with apps like Telegram at the top of the list for security. Along with that, the RCS standard paves the way for easy communication with businesses via business messaging. And business messaging is a tool where customers can interact with businesses through RCS messages without being put on hold and at their own pace. An example would be 
airlines who would be able to send boarding passes right into Google Messages without you having to redirect to a download page. The nice thing about the RCS standard is that with group messages, things are also a little bit easier too. For instance, with SMS texting, in order to leave a group chat, you would have to suggest that the chat creator make a new chat without you in it. With RCS, you can simply leave a group chat without having to change any of your own on-device settings. You can also join an already existing group chat without having a new one created here too, so long as you have a link to do so. Another neat feature of Google Messages is smart replies along with suggestions, whether they're from the Google Assistant or even certain actions like attaching photos or sharing your direct location. Smart reply comes in handy if you just need to acknowledge a message or give a quick answer or even just let someone know that you're busy. These come up based upon what the other person in the chat is saying. For instance, if someone asks, how are you? Google messages may suggest, good, you? Or something along those lines. Suggested actions work a little bit differently. These suggestions are based upon what you send to someone else. If you're gonna say, just got home, Google messages would suggest that you share your location. Oftentimes this is extremely useful because forgetting about the location sharing feature is easy, even though it is a fantastic tool to have within the messaging client. As far as Google Assistant suggestions go, it can sometimes be hit or miss though. The idea is that if you mention a restaurant or location, Google Assistant may suggest it in the form of a link to Google Maps or even a website. By tapping the suggestion, you send that link to whoever you're sending the message to at that point in time. If you're wondering how you can enable all these, all you need to do is open the Google Messages app on your Android device, find that three dot menu at the top right of the screen again, and then tap settings, look for and tap suggestions. All three types of suggestions mentioned will be living in here, each individually toggled. Toggle either assistant suggestions, smart reply or suggested actions, depending on which ones you'd like to enable when you're messaging your friends. Another one of Google Messages terrific new features that have surfaced recently is the ability to organize messages by category. Currently, Google Messages has two categories available, personal and business. In the personal section, you'll find messages from friends, colleagues, and family, or those that you've tagged as those. Generally, any message you get from a real human will be found within the personal section. Business, however, will house any message or you receive from automated systems. This includes things such as one-time passwords, any updates you get from things such as ride sharing or food delivery services, and other text from automated services as we mentioned. More and more recently, it seems like automated messages come in at an alarming rate. The categorization feature also allows you to break these messages up into different sections for much easier viewing, especially if you have two-factor authentication on some of your more prominent online accounts. When enabled, you'll notice three tiles though at the top of Google Messages, all, personal, and business. All just holds all messages that come in while the other two sections will show only categorized messages within those each section. And here's how to enable this if you don't already have it available. Just open up the Google Messages app on your Android device, look and tap that three dot menu in the top right corner of your screen, tap settings, then look and tap for message organization. You can toggle on view messages by category and utilize this feature for yourself. While smart suggestions themselves are great, as we just previously mentioned, sometimes they don't quite like how you'd want them to. If they don't, there's no need to worry. Whatever you wanted Google Messages to suggest can be sent manually by hitting the plus icon next to the text window in any ongoing chat. Once you tap this plus icon, a new window will appear with tons of options for sending content. You can do things like send GIFs, stickers, files, contacts, and even more. You can even have the Google Assistant help you send restaurant or movie suggestions if that's top of your agenda. Another feature that Google Messages takes advantage of is by allowing users to view, compose, and send messages via a dedicated web client. A lot of other messaging apps out there do this, and it's honestly a fantastic feature. For those of us out there who tend to be at a computer most of the time, having messages available right at your Chromebook, PC, or even Mac is definitely more than welcome. You'll need to find the dedicated Google Messages for web client. There will be a link down in the description below. And once you open up this site, just go to Google Messages on your Android device, tap the three dot menu at the top right of your screen, then hit device pairing. Tap the QR code scanner button, and then just aim your phone at your computer screen and scan that QR code. In a matter of few, a few seconds, all of your messages and chats will now appear on your screen, allowing you to message anyone from ease directly from your PC. So that's just a few of our favorite tips for Google Messages out there. 
but we think the best way to learn is just to play around with these features and get to know them better personally. And that really goes for Google Messages in general. Using the new RCS features will make chatting with your friends and family just much more enjoyable and more useful than strictly sending SMS text. And also, you might want to convince your friends to download Google Messages if they haven't done so already, as RCS is baked into the Google Messages app with no carrier reliance needed. That's just about everything you can currently do with Google Messages for Android, but it is worth noting that Google is constantly adding new features and functions as it builds out their messaging app with more RCS compatible content and options. For those of us out there using other services such as WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal and more, maybe you have learned something new and hopefully you have enjoyed this walkthrough of the capabilities of Google Messages, at least enough to give it a try for yourself. Let us know though if you have any tips and tricks of your own that you'd like to share down in the comment sections below. But as always, until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.